my channel so already in the previous series of video we have discussed about the acid bases and salts and in the first chapter also i have told you about the chemical reactions and there are lots of application of this that chemical reaction in the chapter acid bases and salt so today we will start a new chapter that is the third chapter of class 10 chemistry that is metals and non metals so what are metals what are non metals you have everyday use in your life of this metals and non metals so today we will discuss that what is metals what are non metals we will go to its introductory part of metals and non metals so good morning to all so today we are going to start the new chapter that is the chapter 3 metal non metals of class 10 chemistry so you know that there are many elements are there many elements are there among those elements some are metals some are non metals so you can see that metals are not available in the road just like the pebbles and stones so if they are available in just like stones and pebbles then metals are not so much of costly okay and there is no need of wasting so much of money in extracting or removing the metals from their combined state okay so metals are available in combined state or in free state and that's why metals are costly because met generally metals are available in combined form from which we have to extract the metals so in this chapter what we are going to read first of all the first thing is the metals and non metals means what do you mean by metals and what are non metals means how can you distinguish between metals and non metals which are metals which are non metals how can you distinguish second is the study of activity series of metals activity or reactivity series of metals in the previous chapter in the acid bases and salt i have told you about the displacement reaction in first chapter also there is displacement reaction so in displacement reaction you have seen that what is activity series the in the increasing order the metals are arranged in increasing order of their reactivity of their reactivity in the top there is the least a uh, most reactive metals in the middle there is moderately reactive metals and in the bottom there is the least reactive metal so we will study the study of activity series of metals means how the metals are reactive and how they can be compared to other metals means some are reactive some are some are less reactive this that can be done in the study of activity series of metals third is the extraction of metals based on activity series based on activity series there are three types are there that is the most reactive moderately reactive and the least reactive so in the extraction of metal we will see in the extraction of metal mainly we will see which metal can be extracted in which manner according to the activity series because we know that the different elements are having different reactivity so which are most reactive they will not simply extract it so in that cases we are using the electric current and the electrolytic process similarly moderately reactive elements are little bit less reactive than the more reactive elements most reactive elements in that case simply by reduction simply by reduction because we know that metals are generally available in oxide form if we remove the oxygen what will happen the free element or the free metal can be obtained so in that case we will simply do the reduction reaction by removing the oxygen by using some reducing agent and least reactive metals we know that they can simply by heating the oxygen can be re removed and in this way according to the activity series the different metals can be extracted from their combined state second is the some common ores some common ores what do you mean by ores when we will talk about ores what do you mean by ore so first term is the mineral first term is mineral okay so what is mineral anything which we are getting from our earth crust after mining after mining after mining whatever we are getting after mining whatever we are getting uh, the, means in the form of stone or in the form of stone solid substance after mining whatever we are getting that is the combined form of elements combined form of elements combined 
form of elements elements okay so these are called as the minerals the rocky substance the substance which we are getting after the mining that is actually the combined state of the metals or the elements is known as the minerals so the minerals from which minerals from which the metals can be profitably extracted metals can be metals can be profitably extracted profitably extracted extracted those are called as ores those are called as ores clear so the minerals from which the metals can be profitably extracted those minerals are called as ores the minerals from which the metals are can be profitably extracted those are called as ores so in this way we can say that minerals are the rocky substance which we are getting after the mining which is actually the combined form of the metals and the minerals from which the metals can be profitably extracted only those minerals are called as ores only those minerals are called as ores so we can say that the ores are the combined form of the metals ores are the combined form of the metals clear so this is the explanation of ore that what do you mean by ore ore means the substance which we are from which we can extract the metals for example aluminium fe iron zinc when they are present in their combined state those are called as ores for example fe2o3 fe2o3 so this is the combined form of iron fe3o4 o4 this is the combined form of iron similarly znco4 co2 co3 znco3 zinc carbonate ZnCO3. This is the carbonate form of zinc. That is the combined form of zinc. Similarly, aluminium Al2O3. This is the oxide form of aluminium. So, this combined form of metals, either in oxide form, either in sulphide form, means we can say oxide, sulphide, or carbonate form. Carbonate form carbonate form these are called as the ores so the combined form of metals for example the iron oxides two iron oxides this is the carbonate of zinc and this is the oxide of aluminium these are called as ores and in the lastly we will read about the uses of metals uses of metals means how the metals can be used in different way in our day-to-day -day life and alloys and what is alloy the homogeneous mixture of one metal with another metal and non-metal the homogeneous mixture of one metal with another metal or non-metal is known as alloy so why alloy is necessary why simply we cannot use the metal because we know that the important one of the important phenomena is corrosion and metals generally undergoes corrosion so when metals undergoes corrosion what happens the durability and the strength of the metal will decreases when the metals undergoes corrosion its durability and its uh, strength decreases hence the metals cannot be used in direct form in direct form so what happened this problems of corrosion this problem of durability this form, form uh, problem of strength can be overcome by formation of alloy by the formation of alloy because when we are making the alloy when we are making the alloy what happened so when we are making the alloy this problem of rusting strength and the durability will de decreases the problem will decreases hence the strength and the durability will increases and it do, do not undergoes corrosion so when it do not undergoes corrosion we can use it for a long time so simply by making directly with the metal any substances prepared directly from the metal it can destroy after some time due to corrosion to overcome that corrosion we are using what we are making the alloys and what is alloy the homogeneous mixture of one metal with another metal or non-metal okay so for example iron is there we are simply not using nowadays the iron objects we are using the steel object so steel stainless steel these are alloy of iron these are the alloy of iron so we can see that in case of steel the conductivity is better the corrosion rate of corrosion is very very low so that's why the alloy is important and in this chapter we will read about the uses of metals and alloy. 
I am telling you students that this chapter is going to be very much interesting because there is each and every where there is a practical application of metals and non-metals. There are lots of uses of metals and non-metals. That's why this chapter will going to be very, very important. So in this chapter, we will study about the metal non-metals, their physical property, their nature, their chemical properties means how they are reacting with the other metals, acid, bases and salts, how they are reacting. So this all thing we will discuss in this chapter. And these are the prime important topics on which we will disc we are going to discuss in this chapter. So now we will come to our main topic. So we will enter to first of all introduction. Okay, introduction of metals and non metals. We know that there are 118 elements, 18 elements, elements in free and combined form in free and combined form combined form means till till now we have discovered 118 elements in free and combined form okay so there are we can say because every day the new inventions and discoveries are going on so we cannot say that it is fixed 118 elements okay so we can say that 180 till now the 118 elements are there okay in future maybe this number will increases or definitely it will increase because in every day science some research and invention is going on so they are the scientists are discovering more and more elements which are useful for our, for our daily life so there are 18 elements in free and combined form number two number two among 118 elements 118 elements elements 22 are metals to it non metals 22 are non metals 22 are non metals clear so among 118 elements 22 are non metals and rest of them are metals but remember one thing some few elements are also there which do not comes under non metals or metals they are metalloids they will show the property of both metals and non metals so that's why they are comes under the group metalloids but there are 22 are there which are non metals and remaining 100 uh, among 118 are metals in which few of them are metalloids also so there are 22 non metals are there next among these 22 non metals among these 22 non metals 11 non metals are gas non metals are available metals are gases Okay, 11 non metals are gases. Clear? Means among 22 non metals, 11 non metals are gases. One is, one is what? One is liquid that is bromine. That is bromine. So only one of the non metal that is bromine is available in liquid form. And rest of them are solid. And rest of them are them are solid rest of them are solid so among 22 non metals 11 non metals are gases one is liquid that is bromine and rest of them are solid similarly in case of in case of metals metals are generally solid metals are generally solid generally solid except except what mercury and gallium except mercury and gallium because these two elements or these two metal are obtained in liquid state at normal room temperature mercury and gallium these two are the only not metals which are available in liquid form at normal room temperature remaining all metals are generally solid remaining all metals are generally solid so next another point is their introductory point that 92 above 92 element 92 elements above 92 elements okay means beyond 92 elements 92 is the uranium 92 are the uh, 92 number of element is known as the uranium 
so above uranium all are called as the post uranium elements post uranium elements post uranium elements so post uranium elements and they are generally radioactive they are generally radioactive clear so up to 92 elements what happened they up, up to 92 elements 92 element is the uranium so above 92 element whatever the elements are there those are called as the post uranium elements and those are generally radioactive and we know that after that there are many elements are coming that is the artificial elements those are artificial elements those are synthesized so above 92 whatever the elements are there those are called as the post uranium elements because they are radioactive and radioactive elements are having some different properties than this of normal metals and non metals so this is the introductory part of metals and non metals now we will discuss about the metals what are metals what do you mean by metals what do you mean by metals okay what are metals so let's see what are metals so the species species which donate electron which donates electron and forms electro positive species and forms electro positive species positive species is known as metal is known as metal clear so the species which donates electron okay the species which donates electron and forms electro positive species i will tell you what is electro positive species is known as metal means the tendency of the metal is to lose the electron the tendency of the metal is to lose the electron now the question is why the metals are losing the electron so remember one thing in class 9 you have studied that the elements to stabilize itself they are losing the electron and attains the nearest octet or noble gas configuration generally what happened the elements to obtain the elements to obtain the stability what happened either they are losing or they are gaining the electron to just obtain the nearest noble gas configuration in class 9 you have studied about the octet rule means the species the metals or non metals they are either losing or gaining the electron to attain the nearest noble gas configuration so how they can attain the nearest noble gas configuration by losing the electron or by gaining the electron so in case of metal what happened the metals can lose the electron to attain the nearest noble gas configuration for example example if we will see the case of sodium so what is the atomic number of sodium what is the atomic number 11 okay the atomic number is 11 so what is its con electronic configuration it will be 281 281 so here the number of electron is 11 and number of proton is also 11 clear the sodium having the atomic number 11 so that's why its electronic configuration is 281 so number of electron is 11 number of proton is 11 because we know that in a neutral atom the number of electron is equals to number of proton so that's why the number of electron is 11 number of proton is also 11 as we know that the atomic number is 11 that's why the number of proton is also 11 so here the electronic configuration is 281 so you can see that if it donate this one electron if it donate this one electron in that case what will happen it attains the nearest noble gas configuration that is the helium configuration then it attains the helium configuration sorry neon configuration not helium configuration neon configuration so when it loses this one electron it attains the nearest noble gas configuration that is the neon configuration so that is 28 okay so that's why it loses the electron it loses the electron and becomes na plus and it loses the one electron now the question arises why the positive charge arise in sodium why not negative 
okay see when it loses one electron now the number of electron is 10 but the number of proton is still 11 because it is not losing the proton it is only losing the electron that's why the number of electron is 10 and number of proton is 11 so now you see that when number of proton is 11 and number of electron is 10 which charge is dominating which charge is more positive charge is more because 11 proton is there but 10 electron is there that's why the positive means the proton is more the positive charge is more by how much it is more it is more by one it is 10 10 electron will cancel out the effect of char effect of 10 proton still one proton is left and that charge arise over the sodium that charge arise over the sodium that is na plus so that's why here what happened it is na plus and this na plus is called as the electropositive it is electropositive why it is electro because sodium having the 10 having the tendency to lose electron and after losing electron it forms the positive ion after losing the electron it forms the positive ion that's why the sodium is called as the electropositive species the elect the sodium is called as the electropositive species clear so next if we will see other examples if we will see for example magnesium magnesium so its atomic number is 12 clear magnesium atomic number is 12 so its electronic configuration will be 282 the electronic configuration will be 282 number of electron is 12 number of proton is also 12 12 so here if it loses this two electron then it attains the nearest noble gas configuration then it attains the nearest noble gas configuration that is the neon configuration so what happened it loses the two electron it loses the two electron so when it loses two electron two positive charge will arise why because the number of electron is now 10 but the number of proton is now still remains same that is 12 so now here also the positive charge is more by how much it is more it is more by 2 because positive charge is 12 and the negative charge is 10 electron is 10 so that's why the plus 2 charge will arise over the magnesium so here it loses the 2 electron here it loses the 2 electron so when it loses 2 electron it forms the mg2 plus that's why magnesium is also the electropositive species and it comes under the metal okay next if we will see another example for example aluminium atomic number is 13 so configuration is 283 number of proton is 13 number of electron is 13 13 so when it loses three electron it attains the nearest neon configuration so what happened it loses three electron means the plus three charge will arise why plus three charge will arise because now the electron is 10 but the number of proton is still 13 so positive charge is more by how much it is more by three it is more that's why the aluminium three plus and that's why these elements are comes under the metal because they have the tendency to lose the electron they have the tendency to lose the electron and to forms the electropositive species clear so in this way we have defined about the metals that metals are the species which donates electron and forms the electropositive species now next is the non-metals next is the non-metals non-metals so what do you mean by the non-metals so just opposite of this so here if it donates the electron now here there will be gain of electron so how we can define the species which accepts the electron or which gain the electron gain the electron electron and forms electronegative species and forms electronegative species negative species species is known as known as what non metals is known as non metals clear 
the species which gain the electron and forms electronegative species is known as non-metals. So it is quite clear that the species which donate electron is known as metal. The species which gain the electron is known as non-metals. And when it gain electron, it forms the electronegative species. How? We will see now. For example, we will take the case of chlorine or fluorine, oxygen and nitrogen. These three are non-metals, fluorine, oxygen and non-metals. We know that the electron, the atomic number is 9, oxygen atomic number is 8 and nitrogen atomic number is 7. So if we will see their electronic configuration, in case of fluorine, it is 2, 7, 7 plus 2, 9. In case of oxygen, it will be 2, 6. In case of nitrogen, it is 2, 5. Now remember one thing that when the atomic number is 5, when the valence electron means the last electron in the outermost cell, the number of electron is 5, 6, 7. In that case, it is not possible to lose this much number of electrons. It is not possible to lose 5 electron. It is not possible to lose 6 electron. Why? Because then the atom will become unbalanced because number of proton will remain same. But when it donates 5 electron, how many electrons will left? Only 2 electrons. But the proton, but the proton is here same, same 7. So when 7 proton and 2 electron, the atom will collapse. The atom will collapse. So in that case, it is not possible to lose 7, 6 and 5 electron. So here what happened? If it gains 1 electron, if it gains 1 electron, so it will become Fe minus, eh, sorry, F minus it becomes F minus Y because when it gain one electron, it becomes 2, 8. And since, since here the electron is gained, when it gain the electron, it means what? The negative charge is more. Negative charge is more. That's why it forms the electronegative species. That's why it is a electronegative species because when it gain electron, the number of electron increases from that of number of proton. Similarly, in case of oxygen, if it gains two electron, it becomes O2 2 minus 2 minus. So here now it becomes 2 8. And similarly, in case of nitrogen, if it gains 3 electron, it becomes N3 minus. And here also its electronic configuration is 2 8. That is the nearest noble gas configuration of neon. Of neon. So here it gains 3 electron, here it gains 2 electron, and here it gains what? 1 electron. So the non-metals are the species. Non-metals are the species which gains the electron, which gains electron so and forms the electronegative species and forms the electronegative species. Now remember one thing that the order of order of non-metals non-metals according to the abundance according to the abundance in the earth crust means earth crust abundance means means which non metals is available more in the earth crust according to percentage wise percentage wise which non metals are available more so first is the oxygen first is the oxygen oxygen availability is the maximum among the among the non metals so oxygen after that silicon because we know that generally in the desert area, the sands, that is the silicon dioxide. So silicon is the second abundant non-metal. Then after that, phosphorus, phosphorus, and then sulfur and sulfur. So these are the most abundant non-metals in the earth crust. First of all, oxygen, silicon, phosphorus, and sulfur. So this is all about metals and non-metals. So in this video, we have talked about what are the chapters, uh, what are the topics we are going to cover in this chapter, metals and non-metals. Secondly, we have discussed about what are metals. Okay. Uh, for, and secondly, we have discussed about the introductory part, how many elements are there. So among those elements, how many, how many are metals, how many are non-metals. We have discussed in which state they are available, gaseous, solid or liquid, in which state they are available. So generally we can see the non-metals can available in all the three forms, solid, liquid and gas, but metals are only available in solid form except mercury and gallium. So and secondly, we have discussed about the metals. So what are metals? 
the species which donates electron and forms the electropositive species is known as metals and we can see some of the examples in which the metals are losing the electron and forms the electropositive species. Secondly, we have discussed about the non-metals, the species which gain the electron and forms the electronegative species and forms the electronegative species is known as non-metals, is known as non-metals and we can see some of the exam examples in which the elements are gaining electron and those elements are called as what? Non-metals. Those elements are called as non-metals. And lastly, the order of non-metals according to the abundance in the earth crust is the oxygen is the most available because we know that in many oxide form in the air it is available in O2 form. In the above the atmosphere it is available in ozone form, O3 form. So in different form the oxygen is available. Similarly the silicon, secondly is the silicon, then phosphorus and sulfur. So this is all about today's video. Thank you and have a nice day.